from my kitchen to yours from my jamaican kitchen to your family table to your plate and most of all hey everybody how y'all doing are you hey okay in your neck when we good? dry them up too cool now go too deep you know yeah yeah fair watch joe you know our troops see that apple cider vinegar and our troops Come up at right, make them get saturated in the gravy and all of that. On today's episode of the Jamaican Cooking Journey, I'll be sharing with you a one pot meal. And let me just pause here to say thanks to all my patrons that have been making my page possible. Now, this meal is a meal that I had done a little version to it maybe about three years or two and a half years, maybe about three years back. I linked that video for you. And in that video, I did tell you that I did not use salted meat or pickled meat. I did tell you that you could have used it. Now, today is the day that I want to share with you the pickled meat version. So right here in this container, I have my very own pickled meat. It's not a lot. I won't be doing a lot. Daddy, you smell it? Mm -hmm. This I've been done with these two hands in my kitchen. I didn't do a lot because I bought some boneless beef to do a little video. And I didn't want to use all of it. And I had this left back. And I said, why not pickle it? Look at the pickling. Look at that pickling. Yeah. So let me show you. I'll use my bare hands. All done by yours truly. In this very own kitchen so I'll be using this meat to put in there so the dish is going to be <clears throat> when I was a little girl in the country I did tell you in that video that my mom she used to make natural coconut oil and she would have a lot of coconut grating sometimes she would have a young baby there too she had a lot of us you know back then those people so whilst grating 100 200 250 coconut as that was their way they didn't have any other way out of preparing coconut to get oil they had to grate it that was back then so they would have to have something being looked about so she would take a little of those coconut and she would make some coconut milk and she would cook down you know country kitchen would have always have one banana grown in there even a little fall down banana somewhere nearby so she would you know sometimes we didn't she didn't need another time to stop to make dumplings so she would just cook down that banana in the coconut milk and that was what they would use to heat and you know to keep their stomachs <clears throat> until they are finished grating that coconut so hence we call that coconut fringy. Sometimes you'll put dumplings. Sometimes we made it for dinner. We would put like soft renta yam. You know it works. Cocoa it whatever you want. But a little piece of pickled meat in there would make the difference. My father was a butcher. I said it so many times here. A licensed butcher. So I know a thing or two about meat. I know a thing or two about pickled meat. How to do it. To let it not get spoiled. Or maggots taking it or whatever. I know also a thing or two about meat, the tasting of meat. I know how to select meat. I know also that if your meat doesn't have a specific taste, it is due to the animal not mature enough before butchering. Also, it has to do with the feeding, the type of feeding that you, the type of thing that you feed your animal with. Oh, now some people don't want to hear that, but you know, different strokes to different folks. I'm talking to a vast amount of people over the world. Some would, some won't, but that's how the cookie rolls sometimes. So here I have got a pot right here with some water. You see that I don't have a lot of this meat. It's just these two pieces. Mind you, this one should have a piece of um, bone. Bone would be good, but I told you I bought boneless. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wash this pickling off it. And then I'm going to throw out this pickling. I'm not going to use this to do any more pickling. I'm going to throw it off. These two slices of boneless beef has been saturated in this brine. I've 
open it for the very first time in nine days my father would wait until 14 days but i wanted to do this video so i'm gonna get it all washed off and come back so i have washed off that pickling and as you can see this there no regular beef doesn't have this color the pickling has transformed it into a different color which when you buy your corned beef you will see that's how it looks this is not salt beef this is corned beef i think they use a different method for salt beef so now i'm gonna put it here in this amount of water and i'm gonna leave it for about two hours no i will not be scalding in the next clip when i return i will not be scalding this corned beef hmm? i'm gonna leave it in here for about two hours but at the end of the first hour i will just come and change this water i'll not be scalding it off to get any extra salt out of it this is what is going to flavor how a little one pot will look fringy jamaican coconut fringy this pickled meat is what is going to flavor it salt wise and with the others that I put in there. So after two hours, I'll catch you. So I am very much back and normally we don't trim before we corn or before we pickle. So, well, I personally, because that's all I saw my, it never trim like that as soon as we, so it is at this point. Now remember I told you I wasn't going to scarlet it off. So for those who are going to say this salt, this pickle process with this holy salt, and I washed it before and I soaked it. So I'm going to cut it in small pieces and look how I cut it. I'm cutting it against the grain. This is the grain. So if I cut it like this, you see what is going to happen, you know? So I'm cutting it against the grain. Eh? All right. So I cut it up in small pieces as I want it to be properly cooked. So this amount of meat here now, it's enough for salt in the pot, I would say, you know? So at this point now, you're gonna move all this, you know, want this. Hmm? Let me show you what you're gonna remove if you so happen to have this. And maybe you're not gonna able to pick your meat and have no experience of pickling your own meat. So this piece here, this little piece of thing right here. So yeah, we want that. Mm? And these are okay. This little piece can come up. Because most of the times, you know, I didn't choose this meat to do this. You get meat that has marbling to make the meat juicy. Mm? So I'm going to cut it in these pieces. Can't remember this pickling thing here. Moisten this meat already, you know. You see it? Look at it. All right. So finish, cut it up and return. My pot is right here with my freshly squeezed coconut milk you see the richness of it and when you go to the other video that i'm gonna link you will see i pretty much started that video with this coconut mix so i'm gonna put in i put i'm putting in my pickled beef and mind you back in the days we would only have pork mm? and if you want to do this i'm doing this because i have the beef but if you're a pork eater pork would be better because pork is a more flavorful meat than beef but if you eat pork you can use it but if not use this or what else you want to use so these are a few pieces of meat in our coconut milk and that's basically how i'm gonna start it i'm gonna leave it let it come to on the medium a bit up a little more taking a lot of or paying a lot of attention to this coconut milk because the moment it starts boiling that rigorous spot it is gonna come right over if you know anything about coconut milk real coconut milk that is it will come right over it and lift the pot and foam and all that flavor that goodness that we want it's gonna come over when it comes over Yo, this thing not having a nice flavor again. So I'll catch you in the next clip whilst this starts coming to a slow boil. I was so busy, family, it nearly came over. You see that fat from the coconut right at the top there? Wow, look at that. It, that is what would bring it right over. It nearly, as I was busy trying to prep for, you know, the other stage. So look at it. 
you see that so your pieces of meat are in there they are nowhere near cooked so i'm gonna go now prepare the type of you know ground provision i'm gonna put some dumplings of course yeah and you'll see in the next clip so you want to have it like this as we are going to slow cook this so we won't need a lot in here so you can just imagine what this looks like or what this is going to taste like i'll catch you in the next clip so at this point you want to turn your flame down cover your pot to like three quarters leave that opening that it won't have built up a lot of steam so it will just cook slow i'll catch you i'm back at you and this is what is happening over here yes this is the piece at which you want to be cooking so right here i have some frozen yellow yams we start get back you know if you know some of you peel my yellow yam them and freeze them yes so i'm just gonna rinse off that 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 that, that frost from the the freezer and i'm just gonna put it in there and let it start cooking at a slow pace because i want these yellow yams to cook and to break up and to start thickening this spot so this is what i am doing right now and also at this point i have here two pieces of ginger i'm gonna two small pieces i'm gonna smash it this is for if you have a problem when you use when you eat coconut remember it's all coconut milk you know so i'm gonna put my piece of ginger in now let's time forget yeah the yellow yams with that coolness from the freezer yeah it dropped the temperature so it's just starting to slow down but as we cover it will come up a bit now i'm gonna prepare in my dumpling dough i'm gonna put me in a little salt mm -hmm. not a lot because i'm gonna be using some butter and i think this butter has some salt in it so this is about about 10 ounces of flour are about 12 i'm gonna be putting one heap teaspoon of my butter in there and i'm gonna proceed to make my dough in the next clip i show you this what i'm using in the dough i don't have to show you how i make the dough because you know that long time in the next clip when you see me i'll be putting in my dumplings i'll be putting in a few bananas green bananas and i'll show you how i catch you so this is my dough all soft and I'm gonna make my dumplings not thick, but pretty thin. Why? Because I want them to cook right through and don't be thick. They are not supposed to be thick. These dumplings are supposed to be pretty thin. Okay, I'm gonna put my dumplings in and uh, my yams are supposed to be smaller, but because when I took them from the freezer, I could not cut them. So what I'm gonna do, soon as I put my dumplings in, I'm gonna take my yams out cut them in smaller pieces everything is gonna cook together and break down my soon come so these are my pre-cooked yellow yam and i'm just cutting them now in smaller pieces i'll show you how you can get this yellow yam done store it for months in your freezer but i do it on the family channel it's so pretty they are yes i'm cutting them smaller because dad did them dad did them for the freezer but he didn't know so you see these are not cooked but the hot water went through them so pretty and clean they are so i'm gonna return them now to my pot yep that is all we wanted i've got me here a few green bananas green planting will be really nice here too you know really nice so this is how i cut my green bananas and this is to help them to cook faster to break them we want them to be all soft they are going to cook just as the meat is slow cooking. This food is going to cook with it and it's going to come right down until everything just like literally is just melting in your mouth. So what I want to do back in the days, I know my ancestors will be very pleased right now. Back in the days, they would never put any coloring, but I think I want to put a little piece of turmeric to sort of change. So I'm putting natural turmeric i'm putting this and i'll see how much that colors it up for now if i have to put another little piece then i will you see this this is just what i put so i don't grate it i just want it to stay all you know so maybe i have to put another little piece i think we can yeah 
So I just treat it the same way as I'm treating, as I, are, as I treated the garlic. Now still on the slow cooking, we are gonna let it come to a boil, cooking slowly. Right here now, I'm gonna be chopping. These are my little herbs. And then with a little black pepper, I'm gonna chop them fine at a certain interval I return, and I just leave them. You see the, 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 the you see the, the, oh, the, the, oh, my, my, my turmeric, you see how it is? Yeah. So, I'm gonna leave it here, no salt. We now use no powdered season. We now use the maggi soup it up. This is the coconut milk. Slow boil. Catch you. So this is where we are at. But slow now you can cover fully. So you see what that little turmeric did to it? You know, it just give it that little, we just change it around. No. What I want to do right here, I want to taste because I'm just going to be adding. Look at that. Everybody's just cooking, gelling away. But you know what happened? It's not even half of the way ready as yet. Um, don't grate the ginger. Don't try to grate the ginger and the turmeric. You'll have strings. If you want to put up with the strings, you can go ahead. What I want to do, I'm going to be putting in my little seasonings. So, I'll just be tasting. I think I should be tasting for what do you think dad where do you think we get from this yeah flavor but what flavors I'm looking for two flavors right here mm. me can't get them for ask them because it's not alive <laughs> so me I use you call your life what are the two flavors you think I'm looking for here like, um, flavor from the, the skeleton and whatever you nobody's in there in you there just there. lose the work mm. I am looking for the coconut and the pickled meat flavor okay salt perfection that's what it's supposed to be pickled meat coconut flavor I keep that you have lost the work mm -hmm. so these are my chopped onions and scallions i'm gonna put in them in right now i think if they had they would back in the days but most time some i'm putting in some smashed garlic mm -hmm. and i want to put in some green thyme and i don't want any of the sprigs in there Mm -hmm. back in the days if them had they would but because most of the time when we did this dish it wasn't for like it was just for a little thing you know me i say sometimes we do it for dinner yeah i think that's enough and then we could never as black people half people from african descendants african race we could have never left out the great jamaican scotchy so look here let's put it in there look at that look at that it's not ready yet look at these yellow yams you realize that they are breaking down they don't have sharp edges anymore this is it no artificial flavored seasonings no nothing at all so look here look at our bananas look at the pieces of banana we're gonna cook them till them start to break down until them soft into this very liquid and we are gonna be doing it at a very very low pace you can cover right now fully because everything is intact enough food is in there to hold down the pressure that that coconut milk builds up when it starts boiling rigorously we have got enough heavy food dumpling yellow yam and banana to hold down the pressure of the coconut milk so i hope you are hearing that simmering dad bring here yeah. i hope they are look at this look at this tell me what you know about there now look at this it is sticking to the bottom of the pot look at this look at this it's all look at this so you want to give it some nice tear now remember slow it's sticking to the bottom of the pot so we're gonna just use our spoon remember you have to use a jesse for this you know some thick pot no um what's that thing non-stick none of those it must be your cast iron if you have your cast iron yeah are your cast iron coated with in a, uh, in a milk coated cast iron you can use that look at this now it's ready it is ready because it's supposed to end up with a soupy 
consistency you're gonna heat this look at all those bananas look how they have broken down to pieces the yam them cook on them look at them they're just breaking when you touch them so look at this you want to give it a nice tear you saw everything coming together the soup inside there it's sticking look at the pepper it's not burst but every single flavor that it has has been ejected out of it into this spot look at it let's turn our flame off and we're gonna leave it for another 15 to 20 minutes to settle then I'll come back to let you see the real look the real consistency of this thing I'll catch you in the next clip so it's partially cooled and I low. look at this you see that thing on the top there look at that like cornmeal porridge it has partially been cooled down these are the things I just added for garnish some French thyme as it cools down it thickens look at this look at my corned beef when you think about this dead look at it this is my soup y'all look at my soap no cornstarch slurry no let's scrape around all these flavors and I'm gonna dish up some like right now in your face from my kitchen to yours from my Jamaican kitchen to your family table to your plate and most of all let's get some of this corned beef my very own made corned beef in let's get some of this yellow yam bananas some more corned beef, nothing wrong, you know. Let's go clean this plate up and come and present to you. My kitchen to yours. From my Jamaican kitchen to your family table, to your palate, and most of all to your stomach. I know my ancestors will be very proud. They are in the spirit. It is this Jamaican um, coconut fringy. Some people say pakasa. This is a different level. This is a level of I am pakasa. We did it back in the days. All Caribbean people must know. Maybe you put a different twist. You call it a different name. African descendants. We are Jamaicans. Big up on yourself once more. I will go to my family channel. I leave the link in case you're new here and you didn't know that I have a family channel. It is my honor to be eating this meal with you on my family channel i want you to be there to take every single bite of this with me to see how it is thanks for the love thanks for the support remember to be you do you most of all try to remember to love you some of your long time old time back then food that we grew upon never forgetting them in the description of this and all my other videos and lives then you will see there all the info that you need to get on to this Jamaican girl. Look here, let the reason be no anky panky.